Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of Overreaction Monday. Rich Eisen along with Chris Brockman. Hello. As, as always, it's brought to you by our friends at Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code Overreaction for $20 off your first purchase. Every game... <laughs> For week eight, with the exception of Monday Night Football between the Steelers and Giants, is in the books by this very taping. It is good to see you, Chris Brockman. So Great much to, to you, overreact man. to. It's it's kind of silly. Dude, because there were no bye weeks this week. It was an oh, absolute right. full slate, 16 games. Well, one on Thursday. We got one coming Monday night. Uh, wild, wild, wild weekend, man. To say the least. Yeah, it's just... Dude. I mean, with that, that Hail Mary in uh, in Washington. Did you watch it live? Were you watching the of Hail Mary Of course I live? was, with yeah. Cooper. Oh, man. And we both got up out of our chairs. We were screaming. That's kind of wild. I, I, had, I had taken the Bears yesterday, uh, and and so I, I had a chance to be in first in my Picks League. Oh, boy. Just like you. Oh. Uh, that you do. So, I mean, Sarah organizes this Picks League, and... I, I had gone out on a limb. I was like, oh, I'll go with the Bears. Because I had made the pick because it didn't look like Jaden was going to play. And then I didn't change it. Right. Yeah. I'm not in first anymore. Yeah, Mooch wound up lone wolfing Washington because oh, wow. we picked it before we heard about right. Jaden Daniels. And then when we heard about Jaden Daniels actually playing at the very end of the show, we're like, do we switch it? Do I switch it? Do I yeah, really exactly. like, oh, screw it? Because Mooch is already it. lone wolf. Right. So of course he texts the entire group <laughs> with with a with a wolf emoji. Yeah. Well, like like yeah, like he saw that right. one yeah, coming. I, I called it. He's a genius, that Mariucci. <laughs> I gotta tell you. All right, hit it. Overreaction Monday. Hit it. That was terrible. That was crap. That was garbage. This place sucks. Overreaction Mondays. Monday. I can't wait to hear what's first top of mind with you, Chris. First up is something we've been talking about for a while, just because it's been a story. The team came into the year uh, thinking they had a playoff roster, but one glaring meteor-sized position was holding them back rich Jameis has taken the browns to the playoffs dude to the playoffs they're two and six now you were just telling me you were just telling me on the flagship show how a team with three wins isn't out they're only uh, one game back and Jameis is playing better than that other team's quarterback come on man Jameis has taken this rich you heard him in the pregame i was ready to do anything for this man Jameis Winston is a leader. You'd never seen the other Browns players respond to Deshaun Watson. That's true. Ever in the, his years with that team. Agreed. Than they did for Jameis on Sunday. A million percent. I totally agree with you. They would do anything for that man. Dude, Cedric Tillman showing up Cedric? like. Who is that? Who is he? Like Webster Slaughter 2.0. Now we're talking. You know what I mean? Like Nick Chubb. The Miz was on to something. Nick Chubb got on. the rust off. Jameis literally has wins in his name. Why can't they win seven, eight games to finish the year? If they win eight games and they finish 10 and seven, they're in. Come on, man. I, I, I I'm, I'm excited for Jameis. I'm excited for Browns fans. I'm, I, I can't sit here and say, you're right. They're going to the playoffs when, but here, here's the interesting thing. If you really just want to play this thing out, the teams that they're going to end up having to beat. Okay. Okay. Uh, they already beat one of them. They held ground at home against Baltimore. Right. Correct. Right. Um, but the, let me see who they've already lost to. It's up, yeah. They, they, there's really nobody that they've, that they've lost to. They other lost, than Cincinnati. They lost all their NFC no, games. No, what I'm saying is like uh, Vegas, they're not going to have to worry about in terms of, of, of a playoff spot. Uh, they lost their NFC games. Correct. They lost all their, they lost all of their, and like they'd be dead last in the NFC is dead in the water. Um, they lost at home. The Cincinnati, it, it, that's a team. They'll have to leapfrog. Um, they can but, get that but here's back. the other one. Like, cause again, they're not winning the division, right? No, not gonna no, say no, that. no, okay. no. So, so they'd have to, that, that they would have to beat the chargers they, next week. Correct. And then, and make sure that they don't slip up at, by the way, James going back to new Orleans, right? You think he's motivated? Okay. And then, then they beat Pittsburgh at they, home on, right, a, short on week? a Thursday night. Um, then there's that one at Denver on a Monday night. Now that could be for a playoff spot. So let's just say they win their next three. Okay. Let's entertain this. Okay. So they're what? Five they're, and they're six. They're five and six going into that game at Denver. Now we're talking. 
They now, have to be. Now it's real. Now it's real. Right. So they have to win at home against the Chargers at New Orleans and then home against Pittsburgh for that to be feeling real on that Monday night. Then they got to win the last three. Maybe they'll lose to the Chiefs. They got to beat Denver. Got to split with Pittsburgh. Win the last three. What's uh, that? Is that 10? Is that two nine? And six nine is, and eight? Win a tiebreaker? Yeah, like two and six is too deep a hole for me to sit here in week nine and go, you're right. They're making the playoffs. If Come look, on, man. But if you look at how Jameis is playing, right? It's uh, exciting. I, I totally excited. And the other quarterbacks that are sniffing it. He's playing just as good, if not better than all of them. No? In one game against a tough defense, for sure. Uh, I, I got it, but. This is the NFL, man. This is you got to do it week after week after week, and you're just assuming it's going to be just as smooth as what it looked like with Flacco last year. Why not? I'm not saying there's no why not, but this is a definitive statement that's clearly an overreaction and is perfect fodder for a show like this one. I appreciate you coming out of the gate hot, but I can't sit here and say you're right. They're going to the playoffs. I'm looking at the rest of this conference, and they're going to wind up winning eight of their final nine. Mm-hmm. They'd have to win eight of their final nine. Right. Lose to the Chiefs, beat everybody else. Yeah. yeah. All right, let me, Come on, all dude. Right, let, me, let me ask this then. If they had started Jameis a month ago. Of course it's different. Of course it's different. And everybody, that, that's what. They, but everybody has known it for a whole month. Excuse me. If you're, you would never have done this. But if your statement was Jameis proves. They should have started. They should have started him yeah. a month ago. I would have said you are one hundred percent right, and that I don't need to see what the next couple of weeks look like for me to make that determination. That said, I need to see the next couple of weeks to make this determination. This guy was the number one pick in the draft. I understand that. Come on. By the way, could you imagine if Mariota had played yesterday and beaten the Bears? That would have been amazing. Winston and Mariota <laughs> back at it. Party like it's 2015. Right. That instead of seeing the one versus two matchup, that's the most recent, you'd see one and two back at it for different teams, like multiple franchises removed. Wow. NFL, man. Yeah, that's an overreaction. NFL, but great man. way to start it. And by the way, Browns yeah. fans, for, for that to happen after Jim Donovan passes, when you feel like there was a guiding hand totally. on, on the day and Winston makes you believe, and this all makes you believe for one week in this God awful one and six start of a season for yeah. them to have that where Chubb looks better and the offense showed up. Yeah, David with, and Joku and Cedric Tilly. These guys are great. Elijah Moore, who well, after the Jets <laughs> gave up on him, he's been gone. The milk carton. Eight catches, 12 targets. Like that's what we're talking about. The guy had 330 yards yesterday I know. on Sunday. What else you got, Chris? I love it. I love it. Uh, speaking of partying like the old days, Rich. <laughs> What do you got? We're heading for another Bills Chiefs AFC championship game. Uh, I don't think that's an overreaction. You might be wrong. I mean, the Texans might crash the party. Doesn't, Ravens doesn't could crash feel, the doesn't party. doesn't feel like it, though. This feels like so for that to we're happen, on a collision course. For that to happen, the, the Chiefs finish one. Bills finish two. And the Bills two. finish four, three. Or three. They don't but, have to finish two. But it feels like the Bills are right, the second so that, best team so in that, the AFC. Right. The Bills just can't finish fourth. That's it. Because they're not finishing fifth, sixth, or seventh. They that division is over. Definitely not. You can print playoff tickets. That is not an overreaction that you can print playoff tickets for the for the Buffalo Bills in the wild card weekend. I think everything's digital now, but yes, I understand. Under, you know what I mean? Yeah. You could start making those uh those plans. Um but I don't think this is an overreaction. Right now, their number right now, if the playoffs started today. And no wild card teams advanced, okay? And this is before the Steelers game on Monday night. Let's just assume uh, that this doesn't, I'm, I'm that this age as well, win. Yeah, I'm okay? Yeah, Pittsburgh wins. So yeah. what we're saying is the Bills would play the Texans and the Steelers would play the Chiefs in the divisional round. And obviously Houston, you know, we don't know the extent of Stefan Diggs's injury yet as of this recording. But even if the Ravens win the win the divi- win their division, they might be the ones that go to Kansas City in a division. Well, how about that last year's AFC championship game being the divisional, divisional round? round. AFC playoffs. That the, that the Chiefs see the Ravens Ooh. first up after their bye week. Yeah. That'd be nice. That, that this is not a, out of the realm at all. 
Chiefs at seven and zero. Bills at six and two right now. Um, it's the fourth time they've started six and two in the Josh Allen era after not starting six and two at all between 1994 and 2018. In case anybody's wow. out there wondering, how has Josh Allen changed the fortunes of the <laughs> Buffalo Bills? That's your answer. That's how. Four times six and two since he's been there. Zero times from 1994 till he arrived. Yeah. And so, um, and then for them to show up and have, uh, can you get that ready? Give me, give me the, um, give me the sound from uh, from Geno Smith, if you don't mind. What we played during the during the franchise show. I got to play because we've never was, heard this, right? I, I was kind of stunned. We've never heard this I after the after the Bills that. went in and came up with their fourth win of the season by twenty one points or more. And they, and they went into Seattle and then took the place over. I've never heard a Seattle Seahawks say this about his home crowd. That's off the Buffalo. They came in, they beat us at home. Um, their fans traveled well. You know, it was real loud in there. Kind of felt like uh, we were on the road at times. So they came out, they, they fought, they beat us. And, uh, you know, we can say we made mistakes, but um, they capitalized. I've never heard anybody that say that sobering. the 12s got, got yeah, drowned out. Got snuffed out by never the road heard team. That. And that's not a close trip. I understand if it's, you know, San Francisco or Denver maybe. But yeah. Buffalo to Seattle? It was pouring I on know. Sunday. Yeah. So uh, Buffalo's got Miami at home next. They could literally basically finish that game, yeah, win it, then, sweep Miami, which is yeah. currently at this present time the closest team to the to the Bills. At two and five. Think think about it. They're six and two. The rest of the division combined have six wins. Yikes. That's how dominant the Bills are right Yikes. now. Yikes. Right? Miami and then add Indianapolis and that big one against Kansas City. So, you know. But for what you're saying right now, it's definitely not an okay. overreaction. All right. What else you got? I like it. Uh, Rich, we've been talking uh, a lot about this division being the best in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're starting to get a little dinged up. I'm going to say the NFC North is only getting two playoff teams. Hey. That Hail Mary uh, in Maryland may end up costing the Bears a playoff berth. That may come back to haunt them. Let's just sit here and say this. Had... Tyreek Stevenson knocked it down or just or stayed talking trash. Just stayed talking to trash. The commanders fans right. <laughs> and not even gotten involved in the play. Right. Let's just say they knock it down. Okay. okay. And there is no, or, or to be more um, honest and less, less trolling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> had the bears not just basically allowed a free 13 to 15 yards for the commanders before attempting right. the sure. Hail Mary. Sure. Or had they or, actually or had not they, fumbled on the goal line. Right. R right. I guess so. <laughs> well, th their eventual touchdown came from the field position based off of where they fumbled the ball. So I'm, I'm not even going to say that. I'm just saying the way that it all played out, if they actually played defense on Jaden Daniels, didn't give him 13 and didn't seconds give him, and didn't give him the free yards to set up yeah, right. the Hail Mary or didn't give him the 12 plus seconds. Let's just say there is no Hail Mary attempt or it was unsuccessful. Yes. The Bears right now would be at five and two tied with the Vikings half game behind the Packers and a full game behind the Lions instead of being four and three and in last place. And the Eagles would be in first place in the NFC East by a half game over the five and three commanders as opposed to being a half game behind the six and two commanders. That's how these things are playing out in just one short week's time. And I do understand you extrapolating it out that it could cost the bears because that is a conference loss. That is a significant loss to have. And someone they might be competing with for a wild card berth. It's entirely possible if the Eagles do continue to progress, right? Yeah. right. Yeah. All of that stuff. Yes. No doubt. Yes. Um, that said, that means there's going to be, I think you could sit here and say there's two from the East, right? I think so. Okay. So two from the North. Yep. Which would mean two from the West, the West, only one from the South right now, depending on how the Buccaneers maybe 
get their moxie going again. Maybe. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they need to get well, it going. I'm, just, but... I'm more nervous about their defense right now, to be honest with you. Uh, Tampa? I, yeah. Yeah, they're giving up a lot of yards, a lot of I points. Mean, I mean, this week, just on Monday. I mean, Kirk recorded... Cousins, I think, has thrown for 8,000 yards against them this year. When we've recorded this show, I mean, Todd Bowles was asked if he's going to give up the defensive play calling on this day. Mm. I mean, that's that's a concern. I'm, I'm not concerned about Baker's moxie and, and making uh, chicken salad while they're waiting for Evans to come back. And Kate Otten is suddenly the tight end of the, the of the day, right? Man, I hope you got him. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of think that there's going to be three out of the North. Vikings are slipping, because, as I tried to tell you a couple I, weeks ago. I, it really just depends on, on who is going to finish second in the NFC West and what their record is going to be. I think the Vikings take down, unless Flacco starts for the Colts on Sunday night, which we uh, Anthony Richardson against the know, Vikings. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that. We don't know that. Right. As of this that, recording. that that's a difference between the Vikings staring at a three game losing streak or not. I think to be honest with you, you know, at this point in time, I, I don't think that's an overreaction. I don't oh, think you're going to be okay. accurate. I don't think that's an overreaction right now. I think okay. that's, uh, that's a, uh, I just don't know if you're going to be right, which I know you like to be. But Packers and Lions are in, right? We, we, we're, um, we're penciling them I, in? I kind of think so. Certainly if, if the Packers keep playing winning football and Malik Willis gets in, normally that's when you yeah. think, okay, they're screwed. But he's 2-0 as a starter yeah. and then won the game after the Jaguars came back on the Packers in week eight. Well, hold those Malik so, Willis thoughts. So, I, and, and obviously the Lions are the class of the conference. So, you know. Yeah. Right. Okay. What else you got? All right. Uh, this is a guy who balled out yesterday. I think he's playing awesome. You do too, Rich. Kirk Cousins is going to be comeback player of the year and an MVP finalist. Ah, come on, man. No. No? No. No. MVP finalist? <laughs> MVP, MVP finalist. Kirk Cousins, really an MVP finalist. I think at this uh, point, if the time, Falcons are twelve and five. Excuse me, and he's got forty five hundred yards and thirty five touchdowns. Let's just, yeah, let's he's hash an this MVP out. finalist. Comeback player of the year. I hear you. I mean, I hear you on comeback player when you come back from Achilles and you're in your late thirties. That one I get. I totally understand that. Um, although, based on the way that we've seen comeback player of the year awards awarded in well, recent days, if you want to take your <laughs> At first, overreaction <laughs> subject matter oh, into his hands. Well, they, I Jameis think, Winston well, yes. would be the comeback player of the year for the uh, second straight year, the uh, bench player of the Cleveland Browns. I would, the say, award. I would say voters have been instructed to not do that. Apparently. They want somebody hurt. They want somebody who's coming I back from it. actual adversity. Just not from the bench. Right. I understand. <laughs> from the crib. From the crib. <laughs> so I, I, I can see that. I'm trying to think who else might have been hurt that it's playing particularly well this year. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely it, not Aaron Rodgers. It's Rogers, it's, it's Joe Burrow, uh, I think, was uh, among the favorites coming into the year. Kirk, uh, obviously, on the list. I mean, Nick Chubb, if Nick you, Chubb, wanna, Nick if Chubb, you say okay. that the Browns go on a run and we okay. would think that he would be significant. I mean, if he gets to 1,000 yards maybe by the end of the season. Um, but th th uh, that's not out of the realm for Kirko. But let me ask you this question. Uh, is Lamar Jackson going to finish? This is all... Providing health. Lamar Jackson going to finish top five MVP voting. Uh, a would, finalist. Uh, he's on a trajectory. Yeah, okay. I would say so. All right. Um, Josh Allen. Josh Allen might win it. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, Jared Goff. Uh, let's see how they finish. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see who else here. Mm. I don't want to fill you. I mean, Pittsburgh. You want to put 15 in there? 15 is usually. Uh, 15 you know, is usually in there. Usually buddy. are in the mix. Right. Especially if Mahomes. they're, you know, 15 and two or something. Um, I, I, I would, I would say if there's any NFC quarterback outside of golf that could win this thing or be named an MVP, you got to look at Jaden Daniels. He is, you know, you've got to look at Jaden Daniels, the way he started in I eight think games. I, if he replicates yeah. the second half, the first half and the second half, well, what, what would he they have to win? How many mix. would they have to go 14? What would they have to go 13, 13 and, four, and four, maybe? Yeah, and he plays like he's playing. I'm down with that. He's nine to one, I think, right now. That's why I'm I'm just saying that the MVP part of it is the one that it's gonna be tough for me to buy for Kirk. But what are the Falcons? They're six and two or are they five and three? They're right now they're five and three, buddy. Okay. <clears throat> they're five and three. All right. 
I mean, 13, he'd have, he'd, he'd have, have to go to, 13 he'd wins. He'd have probably. to have more than 11 wins to be an MVP candidate. I think you're Atlanta. right. You're right. So I'll push back on that being he's an overreaction. Balling, though. I mean, we all wondered how it was going to look. Dude, he's he's winging it around the, the same, yard. I know, but that's the difference between being either 40 or 36 coming back from this thing. Yep. <laughs> Based on what we're seeing. And by the way, in our sleeper league, Darnell Mooney is a weekly start now, but I think you're right about that. He's a, I, I, I think he's a must start for any fantasy I think, league. I think you're right but about forget that. Forget ours. Halftime Half time. of overreaction Monday right here. You want to go get some water while I do this? I do read? need some water. I'll be right right it's right over there. Go grab that bottle right there. See, we're just being friends. We're being friends. Overreaction adversaries becoming friends. And we're all friends here. For us to tell you how you should start buying tickets to any event in your area. We've been telling you about the Game Time app for a very long time. They've been the presenting sponsor of this program for well over a year. So hopefully you've gotten in on the act. And if you haven't, my code, our code, Overreaction, gets you $20 off your first purchase in the Game Time Picks feature that wasn't around last year that's new right now. Filters out all the stuff that you might not need to show you only the incredible seats on great deals that you want. You don't waste time at all searching through thousands of tickets. The all-in pricing feature that gets you the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout, that's still my favorite part of this app. I love it. Because when you see the price, you're like, I want those tickets. And then suddenly you hit the buy button on other spots. Now it's more expensive. Not here. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Mention download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code O V E R. R-E-A-C-T-I-O-N. You get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Visit GameTime.co for details. Again, create an account and redeem that code over reaction. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Game Time. It's funny. At, at home, when our kids say, what time is it? Susie goes, Game Time. <laughs> I heard that from the other room the other day. Well, that's the old Chicago Bulls. Uh, what time is it? Pre-game. They go, right? What time is it? Game, Game time. time. Who? Didn't the Ravens do that too? Did they? I think so. Long story short, now the game time app does it. That's all that matters for us. Love it. I love. Game. Helps us keep the lights on. Love game time. All right, are you good? You're hydrated. I'm, for the I'm, second I'm, half? I'm hydrated. I'm this ready is to great. go. Rich, I'm watered and fertilized. Some might say. Are you going to the Eagles now? Rich, you know we do the end of the show thing where we try to predict what the future overreaction is going to be. Yeah, I got mine right. This I week. have been terrible at those. Okay. Not last week. Rich, the Eagles are back. Fly, Eagles, fly. They're the second best team in the NFC. Huh. Um, Lions, man, Lions being first. I know that. I get it. 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 I I still. When do they play each other? Philadelphia and Washington. Here we go. Thursday night football, week eleven, buddy. We're coming back from Munich. Ooh. We're sleeping off our jet lag while Ooh. still working here. And then rough. the first one, Washington at Philadelphia. I like it. Week sixteen at Washington. I told you they were going to go into Cincinnati and put the bang thing, and that's just what happened. And then they they have a Jacksonville home date with Doug Peterson, who may not have well. They don't. Christian Kirk has broken his collarbone. Yeah, and there's and, kind of mixed reports on Brian Thomas Jr. right now. Yeah, with well, with ribs and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, chest bruise. Something. All I know is they have a Jacksonville team that is an eminently beatable. And then they're the, then the next two games, next three four games in a row for the Eagles Ooh, is at Dallas, home for Washington on a Thursday night. Right here in Los Angeles at whose house on the Sunday night of, I believe that's uh, right before Thanksgiving weekend. And um, and then at Balmer to kick off mm, the first fun. week of December. I'm going to push back and say Washington's right now. Really? More consistent. Hmm, interesting. I do like the way the Eagles... You don't like after the Eagles. They, after what, they run, stub their run, toe, get, run game better, receivers better. Uh, I after they stub their toes, right? They come back off their bye with uh, a home date with the Browns that had people booing mm. and uh, upset. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, we heard that the fan who Nick Sirianni got into it with right. said. That Siri, that he was barking, he started to run, run the ball, ball more, and then he ran the ball at successfully and right. turned to the fan and go, you know, like basically, how do you like us now? Yeah, which is kind of like I wish Sirianni had been more specific to say I wasn't yelling at the guy. I wasn't like the 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 Eagle fan kind of 
back the play of it being more benign than it came out to be. Yeah, it was actually the fan who kind of released right. a statement like, no, this is what I said, and this is what he said back to me. It wasn't a kind of a big deal. And then at the Giants, they just smoked them. And then at the Bengals, that was a really impressive dub. It was. Um, I, I just, I don't know. Jalen Hurts' I, best game of the year on I, Sunday. I, let's put it this way. I can't say that's an overreaction. I can't say that they're, you you know, as of right now. Yes. We, we you know, we'll see what the Niners look like a month from now. We'll see True. how the e- how the Falcons take it from here. Yep. We'll see if anybody like the Packers can come through. Um, maybe beating the Lions this week. That's a huge week nine mm-hmm. game. Can't argue with that, though. I would say if Washington plays Philadelphia right now, I'd take Washington. You would. They have a way they're feeling it right now. And I know the Eagles are feeling it right now. I think that'd be a re- that's going to be a really fun game in a in a, in a couple. Weeks. I just if the Eagles beat Jacksonville, which they should, then they go to Dallas. They're a better team. They're a better team. They should yeah, go into Dallas yeah, and should. say, "Forget this, throw the records out nonsense." Yeah, yeah. Now Micah should be back for then. It, I would I would hope okay. so. But they should win that game. They're a better team. I mean, they, even with Micah, the Eagles are better. The Eagles are a better team. Yeah. And then comes that game against Washington. It's fun. It sure is. NFC is uh, really I, fun. I, I, it, it's fun uh, for sure. But if they keep going on this run, you know what people are going to say that the, the turning point was? Is Sirianni, Sirianni, Sirianni yelling, at, yelling at the fan? No, no. Sirianni's showing up like uh, Private Pile from uh, oh, Full Metal Jacket, shaving, shaving his head. Shaving his head. He shaved his head. They haven't lost since he shaved his head. Yeah, that's true. 3 0. That's true. Ball Brotherhood. That's the way you win. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, are that's we claiming the way him? you win. I don't know if we want to claim well, him. Well, we can't because he grows back. Yeah. Uh, and he's not going he's not keeping it like daddy warbucks like you bud ours ain't growing back what else i shave this every day Uh, i can't argue with that one okay what else uh rich you mentioned green bay okay i Um, did jordan love Uh he he hasn't looked good he hasn't looked good he hasn't looked healthy i guess i should say uh he's limping around a couple weeks ago and then he leaves the game on sunday with a groin don't know the severity of that but malik willis has proven himself flacco-esque they should start Malik Willis until Jordan Love is 100% healthy. No. No. Got to play hurt in this league, get the quarterback spot. You got a guy who's proven. He's 2-0. and oh. I mean, give him the save on Sunday, I you guess. Want it, so you're saying if, if Love is 90%, 80% is enough to go, you're going to start Malik Willis in, in the all-important game in Lambeau Field against the best team in the division, if not the conference, this is exactly the territory and game you must hold. Now, I understand they lost it last year. Mm -hmm. They lost it in convincing fashion on a Thursday night when Detroit came in and just beat the crap out of them. And that's when the Lions started to make everybody believe right off of their big win in Kansas City to start last season that they were for real when they went into Green Bay and eviscerated the Packers on a Thursday night short week just beat him up and destroyed him guess who came back on Thanksgiving day and absolutely started to pound some you know teams themselves so I I can't sit here and say that this is the most important game of the season long run but but you got a week to week league you have to hold your ground at home against the Lions and and despite how great Malik Willis has looked I mean you but you, you, got guy, you got a guy who's banged up, who's leading. Well, I think he leads the NFL in interceptions. As long as he says he can go, and the doctors say to the to the coach, he's he's cleared. You start him. I understand how Malik Willis has looked, and that's a, a great. You've lost zero ground with Malik playing quarterback. The two games he started, and then on Sunday he comes I in know. relief I and it. secures a win, in which Jacksonville is coming back. You know, forced a tying score late. Malik holds on. You're not losing any ground with him at quarterback. What's yep. the harm in sitting love a week or two until he can get fully, fully 100%? There's a bye week coming up after this game against Detroit. Even more so than to play Malik. Uh, and uh, Coming up. No. I'll push back on that. All right. Yeah, I just want. I like there. what you're saying. I just wanted it out there. I can't imagine LaFleur would even twitch in that direction. I mean, that's why Malik is there. So if Love is starts the game, can't go, then you pull him, put Malik Willis in in the middle, and and let the Lions handle that with the bye week on the back end before you go to Chicago. And then have San Francisco at home. Oh, baby. 
Thanksgiving night against Miami, and then the following week, the Thursday night are in Detroit. Full complement of rest because Detroit also plays on Thanksgiving the week before. Man, look, Packers look great. Four in a row. Yeah, they sure do. They keep winning games, and they're, they're, they're thumping you. You know, they, they, they bring the wood. Yeah, they're putting up points. They have, what, I know. They, they have five given games? up 50 on the other side, though, over the last two weeks. That, Yeah, that's true. The defense is getting got a little bit. Uh, you know, and then here come the, the Lions, dude. What the Lions have? just Oof. put up a 50-burger on the Titans before the fourth quarter started. Jameer Gibbs is fast. He, and, and Understatement. Dude, and Montgomery got another one on the ground and threw a touchdown Threw pass. one. Yeah, to Laporta. Jared Goff play faked somebody so bad. Did you see that one? <laughs> no. Okay. He play faked it so bad. He gave the ball off, but made it feel, seem like he still had it. That one of the Titans blew him up and got a 15 yard penalty for it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And That's then the funny. Titans celebrated it. Not aware that he wasn't a sack. He didn't have the ball and the flags on you, pal. <laughs> Goff is balling, man. He sure is. I'm happy for that, dude. That's how well the Lions are playing right now. So you you got to go with love, and okay. if you can't go, then you go with Willis in the middle. That's okay. what he's there for. All right, I get you. What else? I got it. All right, two more, Rich. Two more. Uh, we watched a good uh, NFC West win by the Niners last night. Uh, the N- NFC West is the best division in football. What? NFC West is the best division in football. Come on, come on, come on, man. All four teams can win the division, are in a position to win the division. It doesn't you can mean make anything. a you can make a playoff case for all four teams. I understand that. I don't care that nobody that's has because, more. I don't care that nobody has more than four wins. Top to bottom, that's the best division. Every team in the division has four losses. How can that be the best division? So in, what? How how is this? How, dude, the the NFC North if, is the best division in football. No way. If all four, no of the, if all four of these teams. Can beat any team in any division. There's not a single team with a winning record. How can that be? So just because they're 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 no one's running away with it. Just because a team isn't running away with it, yeah, top heavy, top heavy, a- a- NFC a- NFC yeah. North, top heavy. You b- really believe it? the Vikings are a sinking ship? Okay, a sinking ship. They're a they're sinking. Three they're, games a sink, over they're a sinking skull ship. They yeah. lost two games in the span of five days. Exactly. So what? They're crashing and burning. One of them is through their division and, opponent, and the, which, is and winning, Bears, which is winning the whole damn conference. The Bears would rather taunt their opponents than play this defense. Guy, okay? Guy, so guy. the Bears and Vikings this are guy. out. Okay? They're going in the wrong direction, whereas the Rams and Cardinals okay. are going in this direction. 49ers, uh, everyone's been telling me all year how they're not healthy yet, and there they are, four wins. Still the favorite to win the division. Still probably the favorite to go to the Super Bowl in the NFC. NFC West is a mm. division you do not want to see in the playoffs. How about let me put it this way? Put it a better way because the way you're putting it is a total overreaction, and I don't understand what you're saying. Which division do you have more confidence in to win more playoff games? The NFC North. Come on. So you think one team is just going to carry the North? I think one team's carrying the North to the Super Bowl. I predicted the Lions go to Whoa. the Super Bowl this year. And I think I'm looking, wow. I'm looking stellar in that regard right now through half the regular season. Take out, okay, take out the Lions. Yes. Is there a, is one of the other <laughs> Take three? out the best team in the conference out of the division? Right, yeah, yeah, just take it, just, just, just hear me the out. The Packers have won six of eight, even with Malik Willis as the backup. He looks terrific. Jordan, the Vikings, Jordan Love dude. doesn't look as good as any of the quarterbacks in the West right now, the way he's turning the ball over. No, listen. And limping around out there. I, I, you, you go back and Matthew forth between Stafford or Jordan loving Love. Purdy and then wanting to just like roast him. I, I don't even know what to say right now. I, I would take the NFC North over the NFC West wow. right now in any metric in which you want to put it. And you know how much I love the Rams. The Rams may be the best team in that damn division. That's what I'm saying. You think, would you uh-huh. pick against the Rams if they're playing any other team in that division except the Lions? Would you pick the I, Packers the, against the Rams? I think the team that's best equipped to maybe go against the Lions right now um, well, the 49ers have that we've already beaten you thing, but the Rams were the ones that damn that that came closest last year. The Bucks, that's what I'm saying, uh, came closest too and actually beat the Lions this year. I'm I'm not even going to sit here. The Cardinals the have Lions. every X factor, dude. Dude, the NFC North, the last place team, would be in first place in the division that you're saying. Yeah, but they're going. They're they're trending in the opposite direction. They were trending in the winning direction tre- until they just blew a hail mary. 
But the Vikings have lost two in a row. They were everybody's darling a Dude, couple a week ago. One Hail Mary away from having two five and two teams, one six and two team, and one six and one team. What, what, Come on. But what happened? Did the Hail Mary get caught? It did not. Oh, oh, it did get it, caught. They get, they get so caught. there's a four and three team with right. a five and two and a six and two and a six you, and one. You wouldn't pick one oh, team for the Bears to beat in the West. Huh? If the Bears played any team in the West, you'd pick every West team. Hold on a second. Do they play them? Chicago's playing in Arizona this coming week. There you go. <laughs> okay, buddy. There you go. We're going <laughs> to. All right. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, honestly, like, the, uh, this is the, the most off topic when you've had, oh, and you already whoa. said Jameis was going to take a 2-16 and 16 to the playoffs. What else? I've made my point. All right. You've stuck with it. By the way, yeah, I appreciate no. you really standing your ground there. That's impressive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh-huh. I'm wearing a new shirt. What else? All right. Last, last one. one. Last, last one. one. Last one. Last okay. one. I mean, look, I, I really, I really tried. This is this has been a jet free zone, which I've been really proud of. <laughs> and I really wanted it Don't to Don't worry, be, after this coming week against the Texans, <sighs> it'll be completely jet free. I really wanted it to be a cowboy free zone. Poor Devontae Adams. But man. I can't poor Devontae Adams. He wanted to go there. I, I I don't even know what to say. Rich, the Cowboys are going to have a top 10 draft pick next year. So that's a 7-10 and 10 record. It's possible. It's possible. I, I, I look at their schedule. I, I mean, I, I don't know how they win. Well, there's one against Carolina, so that's a dub. So, so that's a dub. But where where's the other wins coming from? I mean, they do have the Giants on Thanksgiving. So there's that one. Oh, let's even give them That's that. That's five. I mean, of course we're going to give let's them that. Give, let's give them that. Where are the other wins coming from? There's one against Cincinnati that they can take. Maybe. Right? Since you're saying that they're less than. They're less than, but they still look better than the Cowboys. <sighs> Top 10. I'll push back on that and say no. Look at their schedule. I know. Who can they beat? I just think that they're going to have to eventually play better. They're going to get some of their players back. Defensively, they're going to be defensively. They're going to be better. But, but Rich, they're going to get okay. Micah uh, back. They'll uh, get Deron Bland back. They'll get Tank Lawrence back. That will be good enough to start winning some football games that they've already lost in the How last four sound? weeks. They've scored over twenty points one time. And and they're going to be they're going to be. Uh, I would say they're going to be potentially in the seven seed hunt more than they are in the top ten draft pick hunt by the end of the day. Mm. And I'm kind of weaving together. My thoughts about last week's overreaction that I said we would predict would be this week's overreaction is that the Cowboys are going to miss the playoffs. And you have just proven me right. Uh, yeah, I, for sure. And again, I just think there's too many talented players for this team to completely underperform and underwhelm week in and week out. I may be proven wrong. This has nothing to do with the Jerry Jones and me at all. I just can't <laughs> sit here and say seven and ten. They're three and four. That would means they go. Th that would mean they they be four and six the rest of the way, which is a mediocre record, less than mediocre. Four and six the rest of the but way. But do you have confidence in them beating Washington? No. Philadelphia. They should. Houston beat one of these teams that we've just mentioned. I, 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 they, they give usually me, they do. give me zero faith, and I picked them to win on Sunday night. I, I, they give me I zero faith. I don't know where you did that. All four of us on game day morning chose the Niners. Chose the Niners. All of us. I just didn't see it. Coming off a bye, too. Coming off a bye. And I just thought, like, this is your moment to really take control of your season. By the way, uh, bye teams uh, were five and three coming off of byes entering week eight. Both teams coming off of byes, Chicago and Dallas both lost. Wow. So there's that. They can't run the ball. You say they have talented players. Who on their team would you want on your team besides oh. CeeDee Lamb? That's literally it. Uh, uh, I'm not. I, I might be. I'm just trying to back my play of how last week I said that right. the overreaction would be the Cowboys well, are going to miss yeah. the playoffs. Uh, I, I, and everybody's saying that right I'm now. In, I'm into it's it. It's still three and four. I'm into it. I mean, can we put up the NFC standings before we go to our overreaction predictions for the next week? If you don't mind doing that. So I just look through it. The Cowboys are 13th in the conference right now. How about that? They're 13th in the conference. Yeah, you don't have but, any faith they could beat anyone but I, but, ahead of them. But they're only a game out of. You know, 
being in the eighth spot. Mm. So yeah. there's that. And then the Eagles are the five and two team that's closest to them. And man, Dallas is just going to have to win one of those games at home. They can't, they just can't go winless at home. Can they? <sighs> well, that, that would mean the end and, of, and that so, would be the, that would mean the end of Mike McCarthy yeah, and, sure. a, and a total rehaul. I would think, but it's Overall. funny. I mean, they were a team that in the last couple of years couldn't lose at home. They were one of the best home teams in the league. And the, in the Packers last two years. came in and effed them up. And it's been the complete opposite yeah, since that play. They haven't game. won one since then. Dallas's home games this year New Orleans, Baltimore, Detroit. They got smoked. Smoked. And all three of them. And their next home game is Philadelphia. And after gonna, they visit and Atlanta next get week. Smoked. Dude. And Carl Anthony Towns is going to troll TJ yeah. so hard. There's going to be more flowers in here than a funeral. I can't wait. All right, so okay, okay. Let's, my overreaction, we both got our overreaction prediction we, correct. We you it. said the Eagles are going to be. Eagles are back. But is that an overreaction? You or did, accurate? You picked the Bengals last I did. Sunday, right? Okay, yeah. sure. So, okay. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean anything. I know, I know, is it an overreaction know. that the Eagles are back? Well, I don't think the Eagles are going to the Super Bowl, but they're, but they're back-ish. Uh-huh. All right, what is your overreaction prediction this week? All right, let's throw it up there let's, so I can remember what I said. Oh, <laughs> uh, the Rams are winning the West. Oh, Rich. So they go into Seattle and win. Going into Seattle and win. The Niners on a bye, so we're going to forget about them because that's what happens. Out of sight, out of mind. And then Arizona maybe gets got by Chicago. Rams. Trending upward. Best division in football. Cup huh? is back. Best division in football. I don't think that would be an overreaction Puka. if they win in Seattle. I don't think that's an overreaction. I still think everyone thinks the 49ers are going to win the West. But I'm going to say, I'm going to zag. I'm going to say Rams. Uh, I, I I believe you. Like if the Rams win in Seattle and you come here with that topic bar next week. Oh, I'm, I'm you're, you're buying it. Of course I am. I don't think it's an overreaction. Okay. Say. Okay. It's my only pushback there. Um. What was the last time an AFC West team went into Baltimore after the Ravens lost and everybody thought they'd bounce back? Let's see. I'll tell you. It was week two when the Raiders came in. Oh, gosh. That screwed up so many survivor pools. Didn't it? Yeah. I'm not calling that this is going to happen. Oh, here we go. But I'm saying when Denver goes into Baltimore Uh next week and gives them a really good game, there's going to be questions about the Ravens. Basically, people are going to be wondering what's up. With something's the wrong with okay. the Ravens. Something's wrong with them. How close All of a it... sudden after that five game win streak and everybody's thinking that they are unbeatable and this is their year and they have the MVP again and the offensive player of the year in Derrick Henry and that in comes Denver and everybody thinks that Denver's going to get steamrolled and every single time that Denver's gone into a place or everybody thinks that they steam, you're going to get steamrolled. They wind up either winning or coming back and hitting somebody in the mouth in a way that they're not expecting. And I'm so I'm even a, if they win, how close does it have to be? Where, I think it's going to be a or it just looks ugly and they win by a field or they goal. lose outright. Wow. I mean, I'm not sitting here saying I'm going to choose the Broncos on an NFL game day morning next Sunday. I hear you. But I'm just saying that this is a real possibility and that next week there's going to be like, what's up with the Ravens? It's not going to be like, well, they're back. That was just a blip on the Cleveland uh-huh. radar. Um, that's my that's my call. Especially, and I don't think there will be anything wrong with the Ravens. Okay. It's just a so long this is your marathon. Own, we, are, we are marathoning. We are not sprinting. The two Ohio teams are are you know are not going to be factors in the division, even though one of them just beat the Ravens. Right. I get it. Who does Pittsburgh play next week? Pittsburgh's on a bye. Okay. So after tonight's, all right. So they're after so, the Monday night game against New New York, they're on a bye, okay. and then Pittsburgh's at Washington before taking on Baltimore for the first time. Okay. And what about uh, Cleveland and Cincinnati? Dude, Who do they? The, which with you? I'm I'm just wondering because I want to see how this is going to play out with the division. Cleveland takes on the other Harbaugh, and the Bengals have the Raiders in their house before visiting Baltimore on Thursday night. Okay. So let's say in week ten. And by the way, if you're excited about watching that game, too bad. Because you'll be in Munich with the rest of us, and that game's going to kick off in the oh. middle of the friggin' night. So good luck. I'm staying up. Okay. <laughs> I've done. I've been there. I've done that. And the next day is an absolute I know, wrecking I've, ball. I've, yeah, I know, I know, I know. So. Okay. 
that's just stuff to look forward to. I love it. Good Overreaction job, Monday. That's Chris. I'm Rich. Thanks for taking in this show. Uh, what the football with Susie Schuster and Amy Trask have Mike Pereira talking face masks and college targeting and so much more. Keep an eye out for Susie and Amy on that one. And then uh, No Contest Wrestling apparently has a huge guest on Wednesday that they're hiding from us. I don't get it. <laughs> I, think Je- I think Jeff Passon figured it out. Okay, that's O'Shea Jackson Jr. and TJ Jefferson, all part of the Rich Eisen Show podcast network that also has the Jim Jackson Show. If you missed him with Jamal Mashburn last Thursday, check it out. It's awesome. That's how we're rolling into your overreaction Monday, rest of the week. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.